One of the best ways to approach HTML5 is by first comparing it to HTML4 and then learning the differences. Although HTML5 does represent an ambitious step forward in the evolution of HTML, it's largely a revised version of HTML4, meaning that if you're comfortable writing HTML4, you should find yourself quite comfortable with the majority of the HTML5 specification. In this movie, I want to point out some of the major differences from HTML4 to HTML5. Now, first, it's important to note that the HTML5 specification is designed not just to replace HTML4, but also the XHTML1 and DOM Level 2 specification. It also contains detailed parsing rules that are designed to improve the interoperability of systems that use HTML documents. As such, the HTML5 specification is much larger than HTML4 and covers a lot more ground. Now, one of the first places you'll notice a difference in writing HTML5 documents is the doc type and character encoding. Now, here we have some HTML4 doc types, and you can see how many of them there are and how long and complicated they are. Well, rather than having to deal with multiple doc types, you just use a single, simple doc type that declares the document as an HTML file. Look how simple that is. Now, since HTML is no longer SGML based, no document type definition is actually required at all. Now, character encoding is likewise simplified. All that's required now is a meta tag with a care set attribute. HTML5 also introduces some new elements that assist with page structure, embedded content, and new phrasing tags that help add additional meaning to content within the page. Several new attributes have been added to existing elements as well to extend their power and functionality. Forms undergo a dramatic update in HTML5. Much of the work done on the Web Forms 2.0 specification has been added to the HTML5 spec, and the result is new form controls and input types that allow you to create more powerful forms and more compelling user experiences. New form elements include date pickers, color pickers, and numeric steppers. The input element has been considerably beefed up with new input types such as URL, email, and search that will make it easier to control the presentation and the behavior of form content. Now, it's worth noting that HTML5 also adds support for the put and delete form methods, making it easier to submit data to a wider array of applications. Now, by far, the addition to HTML5 that's getting the most attention is the introduction of several new integrated APIs, or application programming interfaces that are designed to make developing web applications easier across multiple devices and user agents. These APIs include the much talked about video and audio API, an API for building offline applications, one for editing page content, and one that controls drag and drop functionality, another that focuses on history, and finally, one that controls application protocols and media types. Now, other APIs like geolocation and web messaging are associated with HTML5, but are actually defined in their own specifications. So those are a few of the highlights of the differences between HTML5 and HTML4. In our next series of movies, we'll focus on some of those differences in greater detail, starting with the new structural tags in our next movie.